senator should be stopped and frisked and kept under surveillance. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I can't see that. <laughs> all, all senators matter. Yes. <laughs> and they should all be regarded with suspicion. Mm -hmm. Incarcerated, absolutely. Okay, continue on that. Um, I also don't like to put uh, people in boxes, so I don't like the term Black Lives Matter. Also because I am Latino, and now the Latino minority is larger than the black minority. So, and, and many Latino people are being killed as well, and all the immigrants that come from Mexico. So when uh, Donald Trump talks about the Mexicans being the big problem and all of that, uh, he is now uh, hated by the largest minority in the USA, which is the Latino vote. And this is, in a way, also very sad because many Latinos actually voted for conservative and Republican candidates, particularly the Cubans in Florida. They were very strong in favor of the conservatives and the Republicans. But now, with uh, what Trump is saying, uh, you know, he's losing a lot of support. Um, in any event, um, I think all lives matter. I support that, you know, uh, Chinese, uh, Black Americans, Latinos, everybody here counts. This is a very special country in the world uh, based on freedom and with a multicultural component which is so important and so unique. This is the only country in the world which is so multicultural, I think. I, uh, I've been working with an organization called Cop Block for about four or five years now. And in my personal opinion, they are far superior to Black Lives Matter. Um, cop block is out there every day, risking their lives, risking their freedom, in order to record the police so that Black Lives Matter has video to be outraged about. But they don't discriminate on which stories that they share. They try to show the full picture. Now, in the week between July 3rd and July 10th, when uh, Mr. Castile and <clears throat> Mr. Sterling were murdered, there were 13 murders by police that week. Not two, 13. And I think that's the biggest problem that we have right now is when we racialize an issue like police violence, you end up ignoring the bigger portion of the problem. We decide to focus on the violence that is enacted against one specific group and the violence, that the same violence, same reasons, same problems that are enacted against other groups end up getting swept under the rug. So 13 dead bodies in the street turns into two. And until we have the ability to, to discuss the issue from an issue of honesty, to be honest about it, let's talk about the problem as it really exists. Two black men were killed from, seven, from July 3rd to July 10th. Four Hispanic men were murdered by the police in the street from July 3rd to July 10th. Two white men, young, under 25, shot and murdered unarmed in the street by the police. That's a huge problem. And we're not looking at the problem in the true size and scope that it is. I know that it's a, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard honesty. It's hard to be dishonest. America didn't care about crack until it was 16-year-old white kids in middle America that were smoking it. The American government didn't care about AIDS until it was the soccer mom who came down with it from a blood transfusion or because her husband was cheating on her and she didn't know about it. The American government does not care. The American media does not care. Most of our society, for some reason, does not care about my, we don't care about minority issues. I mean, let's just be honest. We don't care collectively about minority issues. When these issues become issues that affect the white community, the soccer moms and their kids, that is the point where we'll finally have a real discussion about police violence. But as long as the, the, you know, the soccer mom's son that got shot in the face by a police officer because he pointed his finger at him in Oklahoma last week, as long as that gets swept under the rug so that we can talk about Sterling and Castile only and not acknowledge those other deaths, nothing's going to change. And it's, I mean, it's, a hard, it's, it's hard to be that honest, but it's true. Look at history. Look at history. We didn't care about crack, we didn't care about AIDS, we didn't care about inner city violence. We did not care about any of these social issues that have been so huge over the last 10 years until, we, until it was represented that it was affecting the Caucasian community. Until some soccer mom went on Oprah and cried about her son being the victim of police violence, her son being a victim of, of the police because he has an addiction. Nobody, 
until this was put and framed in a way that it affects every single one of us, we will continue to come back to this seat. We will have the same five conversations about race every four months, and it will literally be the same thing over and over and over. And I know this because I've been watching since this whole the Black Lives Matter movement started, and that's exactly what we've done. Every four months, they throw a, 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 a one of the 50 black men that have been killed in that four months on TV, tell, tell the, the public they should be angry about it, and then we have the same five conversations that we had four months before, and nothing ever moves forward. So until we actually realize, acknowledge, and promote the actual size and scope of the problem, 13, not two, 13 dead bodies, not two, and until that's pushed as the truth, we're just going to keep sitting and having these conversations over and over again and never move anywhere. So I don't know, I don't know why Matt is clear as well, and that's Will's way of talking. That's cool. I will say this. Um, I agree with what you're saying. That's kind of the way you put it in. That's the issue that we have when you're talking to people in Black Lives Matter. It's just the way you put it. Um, I want to be able to say to them, with all honesty, you probably do need to reach out and talk to everybody, like you're saying, because police act out and shoot people of color. And they act out and shoot Caucasians, they act out and shoot Latinos, they shoot everybody. It happens. We need to get rid of the bad apples in the police force, but we need to work together to have a start to even go in that direction. So I feel like, to sum it up, I'm kind of a short speaker. I feel like that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. We need to work together to solve the issue. My way of seeing it is this. we got five people and we're all standing in a pile of manure and some of us it's up to our waists and some of us it's up to our ankles. And because of the fact that the manure is only up to my ankles, we need to just ignore the manure itself and talk about you. Well, my, well, my manure is taller than yours. It's, well, you know, well, how about we just get rid of the manure altogether? Do we need more <laughs> yeah, right. we Let's need just more. get rid of the manure. I don't want to argue over yeah. who's standing in the bigger pile of crap. Let's just get rid of it, the crap. We need more alternative media that's where that, even though you may be right about this, this way of talking and this way of thinking and not engaging with those concerns in the way that the people in those communities have them and understand them themselves is part of the problem and the reason we fail. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that uh, our president, uh, our black, first black president actually under his administration, it seems like America is more divided than ever. So he tends to rush into conclusions before he gets all his facts and data, and both sides do. That's why I always like to remind people let's not rush to judgment and decisions. Because I have relatives serve as police officers. Most of the police officers are good people. They need to remember their oaths when they took office to uphold the Constitution. And they are peace officers and they're not soldiers. So when they say bad apples within themselves, they need to stand up to say, we do not approve what you do. You do not represent us. Bad cops need to be held accountable. But at the same time, black life matter only get mad when cops, white cops or black cops kill black people. How come they don't get mad about the murders of their own, by their own people in Chicago? You know, you, you see people, black people murdered by black people all over the country. Now how come they do not come out to protest that? So I think we have to dig deeper. We cannot be superficially just angry at each other. We need to calm down. Both sides maybe can have conversations about what exactly your concern. I do like Black Lives Matter come out with a few 10 or 8 proposals recently about what they would like to see to be accomplished. That's a good starting point. Let's sit down. Let's have adults at the table to work on those proposals. They're reasonable proposals. So, but I also like to say to the whole country not to resort to violence against each other. It's not the American I came here for. Oh, don't remind me, it's like a cultural revolution is coming to this country. All over, you know, I'm going to talk about that at 2.30 in the main room. It's horrible, it's total nightmare. So I think I do not really embrace any violence, but let's have conversation. We are Americans. Americans can do anything if we put our brain together. But just to be aware, don't use it by politicians for any of their hidden agenda. You know, that's what I will tell people.
I feel Actually, like the media causes a lot of uh, racial divide in the country. Yeah, 100%. We really need alternative media that's mainstream enough where the majority of our population or the people that are informed watch it, and that's where they get their real intelligence from instead of watching Fox News or Communist News Network, things like that. We need to look at something else. We need to have our own media. Yeah, and people like that guy sitting right there in the front row. We definitely, we need yeah. that. I think that would get yeah, yeah, right. I think that would definitely help out. Now, as for black on black crime, like you mentioned, um, in Chicago specifically, I went to high school there, in the areas that we have rampant black on black crime, they do say something about it, but it's never on, on TV. TV. It's never on, so you think they're not talking about it, it's just never on TV. That's kind of like the same thing with my own community, you know, the, the, they'll stand up and say, you know, like, Muslims, you should condemn this, Muslims, you should condemn this. And then you'll have something like the Marrakesh Declaration, where like 200 of the top Islamic scholars in the world get together to discuss pluralism and how Muslim government should be protecting religious minorities, and that never gets mentioned. You know, they act like it didn't even happen. Um, like 11 years, I think, no, seven years ago, uh, Tahir al Qadri, who is a world renowned Islamic scholar, wrote a fatwa against terrorism. It took him six years to research it. It was over 600 pages long. CNN ran the story at 4 a.m. <laughs> and then never ran it again. So this whole like, the thing he's talking about where the media actually creates these divisions is 100% true. I see it in the black community. I see it with the Hispanic community. I see it with my own community. And I, I honestly believe like that's kind of their purpose at this point, is to create these divisions among us in our society so that we're so busy at each other's throats that we can't get anything accomplished. It's a distraction, so we don't pay attention to our own government that gets so powerful, unlimited, where people are fighting among themselves. Then they pass the stupid and more, you know, scary laws to regulate our lives to death. But nobody's paying attention to those. Yeah. Because we're all like distracted by media news and, and busy about some really, you know, some social stuff and, and creating chaos. But most important, we are losing our freedom, property rights every day, our privacy. Then nobody paying attention to those. Just watch C-SPAN to see what the politicians are doing. They almost passed a bill to allow an FBI to go to your personal browsing history and without a search warrant. And your browser company cannot tell you about it. You'll be family charged for them to tell you about it. So we we'll look at uh, almost like uh, being naked in front of our government every day. And nobody cares about that. No media mentioned that. So I think as citizens, we have to be vigilant about what's really important. Don't get distracted by those uh, um, stuff that the media wants to distract us or government wants to distract us. Yeah, for the moment, I'd like to, to put a pin in the media stuff just because he, 